gentlemen, welcome to Talking Around the Table in the Middle of a Studio, the show about the issues in the Swimley community. I'm your host, Jacob Amov, and with us today we have Mark Prouser, the Public Safety Director of Storm Lake Police Department. He was hired on as Chief of Police in Storm Lake in October of 1989 and was named Public Safety Director in June of 2000. He previously lived and worked in the St. Louis area and reached to the rank of Chief of Detective in 1986. Today we'll be talking about marijuana problems right here in Storm Lake, Iowa, as we see a rise in the popularity of recreational use. <laughs> we know that's not just for the legalized states. We'll find out the numbers, if the numbers are rising in our community as well. Thanks for being here, Mark. Good morning. <sighs> How are you today? I'm doing, having a great day. Okay, so before we really get into things, tell us about what a typical day for a police officer is like here in Storm Lake. Well, it would depend on what type of police officer you are. I mean, our patrol officers have one function, our supervisors another, and, and uh, in administration we have another type of uh, function. So which one are you referring to? Mm. Just a typical day in general. For which officer? Um, any kind of officer. Well, the patrol officers work 12-hour shifts. Those are the uniformed officers that you see in squad cars patrolling. Uh, they work from 6 in the morning till 6 at night, or 6 at night till 6 in the morning, and then there's a power shift that works from 3 in the afternoon till 3 in the morning. And their job is to remain visible, on patrol, vigilant, uh, do traffic enforcement, and then respond to calls for service. Uh, another big uh, thing that, that we work on here in Storm Lake is outreach and public relations, creating relationships in a very diverse community. Uh, and, and working through uh, the whole public relations components of our organization. Okay, now you, you used to work in St. Louis, correct? Yes, I grew mm. up in East St. Louis and worked in the metropolitan area. Mm. How has this been different from the St. Louis scene? Well, everything is similar, but everything is relative. In St. Louis, it was a larger population, a larger geographical area. Uh, we have a population here of about 13,000, uh, give or take a few. If you took 13,000 people out of St. Louis and set them off to their side, it would be very much similar. Uh, down there you have a higher volume, but you have more resources. So you're equally as busy in a smaller jurisdiction where you have less resources, but uh, a, stay, uh, a similar ratio of calls for service. Hmm. Good. So what are the typical offenses that people can get charged with? In general, the, the, the largest type of crime that any jurisdiction has, no matter where they're at, are property crimes. We call those crimes of opportunity, your thefts, your vandalisms, yeah. uh, those sorts of things, uh, pretty minor in, in, in the scheme of things. Uh, of course, uh, other individuals, a large number, uh, get involved with law enforcement in, in traffic-related incidents. Uh, Everything from a speeding yeah. ticket to a stop sign to the impaired driver or, or drunk driving. So your traffic is where a lot of the public gets involved uh, with um, uh, law enforcement, yeah. but your property crimes uh, are the largest number of types of criminal activity that occur in any type of community. Yes. So the other day you took us through a little tour of the police station and you talked about the case of items that have been confiscated right here in Storm Lake. Can you tell us a little bit about the case and what are some of the items that have been confiscated? Well, that's a display case we have near our evidence room uh, that show a, a variety of types of weapons that have been seized um, in different criminal investigations over the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, once the, uh, those cases are disposed of in court, it's not uncommon for law enforcement agencies to put them on display, and we have a display case of some of the more unique types of weapons that, that we've uh, seized in criminal investigations. Hmm. It's my understanding you have enough confiscated items to fill up the entire wall. Can you tell us a little bit about why you put some of those items on display like that? Well, there, you, for a couple different reasons. Uh, we have a long hallway that we want to build display cases on so when we have the public in, we can show them the different types of items uh, that we collect. Uh, on the flip side of that, we don't collect those every day. Uh, th those are years and years of different types of uh, items, weapons, uh, other things used uh, in criminal activity that uh, we have saved to, to ultimately put on display uh, for folks to see and view. Hmm. Okay, so we gathered some statistics of marijuana use and arrests in, in the U.S. Let's take a look at the numbers. The main active chemical in marijuana, THC, acts on specific targets in the brain called cannabinoid receptors. 
These receptors are activated by brain chemicals similar to THC that are part of the neural communication system and play an important role in brain development and function. Marijuana overactivates this system, causing impaired coordination, difficulty with thinking and problem solving, and disrupting learning and memory. 90% of Americans with substance abuse problems start smoking and drinking and using other drugs before age 18. According to the United Nations, 158.8 million people around the world use marijuana, more than 3.8% of the planet's population. Among 12 to 17 year olds, 6 to 7% were current marijuana users in 2007. According to the U.S. government estimates, domestic marijuana production has increased tenfold over the last 25 years, from 2.2 million pounds in 1981 to 22 million pounds in 2006. 58% of 12- to 17-year-olds state that pot is easy to obtain. According to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, a large percentage of these arrests for crimes test positive for marijuana. Of adults 26 years or older who use marijuana before age 18, 62% went on to use cocaine at at least some point in their lives, 9% went on to use heroin at least once, and 54% made some non-medical use of mind-altering prescription drugs. Next to alcohol, marijuana is the second most frequent substance found in the bodies of drivers involved in fatal automobile accidents. Marijuana smoke contains 50 to 70 percent more cancer-causing substances than tobacco smoke. One major research study reported that a single cannabis joint can cause as much damage to the lungs as up to five regular cigarettes smoked one after another. (sighs) Wowzer. Those are some darn crazy statistics. So how do these numbers reflect on Storm Lake? I think Storm Lake is similar to most communities. Uh, Marijuana and its use and its abuse is prevalent uh, across a wide uh, spectrum of individuals. It's not specific to any socioeconomic uh, group, any particular ethnic group. We find uh, folks involved with it uh, across the spectrum. And it it continues. to grow in its popularity. It continues to grow in its use. We deal with uh, as many, if not more, marijuana cases uh, each year uh, as those numbers grow. The difference is, when I was going to college many years ago, compared to you in the university uh, setting today, uh, the marijuana is much different. It's much Mm. stronger. It's much more concentrated. Because of technology and growing uh, techniques, we've learned to grow it better and stronger and subsequently the 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 pot that was smoked then and the pot that's being smoked now two different items hmm. oh my goodness wow anyway do you think these numbers are higher or lower than they have been in the past i, I think that um, of course reporting out on an illegal substance there, there's always a, a hidden percentage but i believe the the numbers continue to to go up as the popularity of the drug uh, continues to grow and and it's a cash crop for uh, drug cartels uh, and and dealers and as long as there's that market out there they're going to continue to to deliver it okay so this year there have been seven arrests on bb's campus involving marijuana so does this reflect the community as a whole or is this something primarily happening in the college setting no actually the the university setting is quite um, um, it doesn't have a lot of criminal activity or a lot of drug activity. Do we investigate incidents here on the university campus? Absolutely. We would be naive to say it doesn't occur. But in the scheme of things, of our contacts with individuals in the possession of or the sale of illegal drugs on campus versus the rest of the community, we do a lot more work out in the, in the rest of the community than we do at, at Buena Vista University. Hmm. Do the number of people in Storm Lake using marijuana seem to stay at a steady number, or you, do you think it's a rising issue? Does it keep growing? Well, we, we certainly don't think it's diminished in its number. I mean, uh, we can only um, absorb so many new investigations just based on staffing levels and things like that, and those cases continue to be high and continue to grow. And no matter what type of illegal drug we deal with, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, there's always a common denominator of marijuana use in all of those. It's a gateway drug. It's used as a stepping stone for many to move into other stronger drugs. Mm-hmm. So not only do you have individuals involved in marijuana-related investigations solely using or selling marijuana, but a lot of the more serious and more dangerous drugs have marijuana uh, as part of those investigations also. Hmm. Has there been any talk of making recreational marijuana illegal in some states? 
Well, there, certainly we have that now in Colorado, the state of Washington, and a few other areas. It's being discussed uh, in Oregon, I believe. Uh, it's certainly been discussed, and there is always a group that's lobbying in Iowa for that, but there's also a, a variety of groups, both from a law enforcement standpoint, social services, and medical, uh, that lobby against that. And then there's, there's a, uh, different types of lobbying. One is for the recreational use of marijuana, but even a stronger group, and perhaps one ones with more uh, credibility are those for medicinal use, medical marijuana, and that continues to be a, a uh, discussion uh, in our state and in most states. Oh my goodness. Well, in the meantime, what are some ways you think we can fix this issue? Will the statistics go down to a lower percentage? You know, I, fixing it is an educational process, and it starts at a young age. One of the sad things in our community and many others is we're seeing mar marijuana use at younger ages. 15 or 20 years ago, I would have said it's high school and above, up into the college age and then uh, grown, you know, adults out of the university setting. Uh, now we're seeing it at the middle school age, and most certainly we are aware of younger children being exposed to it in their households where it's acceptable or used by their parents, uncles, aunts, and even grandparents. So it's an educational process. Uh, the demand will be there, certainly the supply will be there, but to educate folks on how dangerous it is, that it is a gateway drug to, to more serious drugs and addictions, that it has a, a high level of, of carcinogens and cancer-causing types of chemicals in there, that has to be done at an early age and consistently uh, through the educational process. That, that process really isn't very effective right now. Okay, so we talked a lot about how the store in the community through the eyes of the police officer. We got to hear a lot about confiscated weapons, marijuana, and how we might improve the statistics in our community. One quick question for you. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what's one thing you would take with you? A knife. Hmm. Thank you, Chief Hauser, for being here with us today. And I'm your host, Jacob Hamhoff, and this is Talking Around the Table in the middle of a studio. Good night, everybody. <sighs> so